Hey everyone, got a quick tip today on a new product that's come out that could revolutionize imitating the number one bass fishing bait in our systems up here in the Northern Lakes. Stick with me and we'll talk a little bit more about it. Hey everyone, checking back on, on a tip on a new product that's out there, the, the uh, Powerbait Berkeley Gilly. Uh, it's a Mike Iconelli designed uh, swim bait bluegill imitator. Uh, in northern bass fishing lakes, bluegill are one of the number one targets for feeding for bass and, and uh, I've seen it myself, especially around man-made cribs. They attract the bluegills and I've seen some gigantic uh, bass, smallmouth and largemouth, come out and, and eat small bluegills uh, caught around cribs. You know, I've t taken my kids out and we've caught some bluegills around cribs and as we're reeling them in and they're flailing around, uh, you see giant bass come up. They don't care about the boat, they don't care about anything. They see that injured bluegill and they want it. So that ghillie is a perfect imitator for that. And, and there's some three sizes and a number of colors. And uh, I've got this HD Sunfish was the one that I picked that uh, most mimicked uh, what I thought the bluegills look like, but it's not exact. And, and my quick tip today is don't be afraid to make some modifications to these baits uh, to help with the color. I'm going to post up on a, a picture on the screen here of the little variations of how a bluegill can look. And, and when I hold up, and I'll hold up right now, a picture of uh, the standard ghillie out of the box or out of the package. Pop this open. This is a brand new package here, and we'll get another view of this going as well. Okay, I am taking out a stock ghillie, and these ghillies are the 110 millimeter size. There's three sizes. This is the middle size, and this is the color of it. And show it on the screen. Show it here. Real loose back end. It's got the bluegill dot marking on it. But what's missing from these, and this is my pro tip of the day, is they don't have much on the bottom. And I'll put these, this picture up again of some fish, uh, bluegills that were caught on a Wisconsin River System Lake up here. And, and in order to get that color, you're gonna have to make some modifications. And, and what I do is I take the spike it, both the orange spike it, right? Uh, in whatever scent you want, and the chartreuse spike it. And I use those to dye uh, the ghillie in, that, in the spot underneath the mouth where, where they're orange. And what I'll do is I'll take, for instance, a package off of any, any bait, the little plastic container, because it's fairly shallow. I'll pour in my dye into the shallow pan, and then I'll take the ghillie, and I'll dip the base of the ghillie under his mouth into the dye, either chartreuse or orange, and I'll give him that subtle little change that, that is, uh, I think sometimes the details matter when, when they're coming after this. It's very lifelike, it comes through the water very nice, but sometimes if the color isn't exactly right, they won't jump on it. So here's an example of a, of a dyed one, and you can see the difference here between the stock. Lay them out in my hands here. There we go, the difference between the stock ghillie and the, and the uh, dyed ghillie. And that little bit of orange underneath the, the uh, that deep orange underneath the mouth of a bluegill can sometimes make a ton of difference. So uh, that's a pro tip of the day. Don't be afraid to dye them, whether it's using chartreuse or whether it's, whether, whether it's using orange to get a little, little more lifelike representation of what the actual colors of those panfish are. And if you're out practicing, don't be afraid to to uh, actually, you know, throw out a slip bobber and a small jig in plastic and, and, and catch a couple of the bluegills so you can actually see what they look like and that way you can dial in your presentation. Um, kind of a unique swim bait, very lifelike, comes through the water very well, has a number of different uh, ways to rig it. Uh, I'm gonna include uh, a picture of some different ones here. The, the best, the kind of uh, pitching one and flipping one, and this thing will skip like a champ underneath a dock is uh, using the owner 5-aught twist lock hooks. Um, those 
those particular hooks and then get a little diagram of them here. Um, there's little places in here in the side of the gilly that you can route them through, lines that you can route them through in different levels. In the middle, in the bottom third, you'll see the lines on here. But the twist lock goes into the nose and then the 5 out hook comes around and can be weedlessly rigged on the back side. Uh, so this way is, is uh, what I think is best for getting under a dock. You can skip this thing. You don't need to add any weight to it. There's enough weight in the bait and that, that five, out owner, 5 out owner twist lock hook there um, will get under there real nice. And I'm telling you, this thing will skip flat and you skip this under a dock and they've probably never seen this bait come down before. They've seen plenty of jigs, uh, plenty of Senkos, but they've probably never seen a ghillie come down on them. So it's a, a real sneaky dock bait to use and, and a good one here that I definitely would recommend. That's one way, so the dock way. Then there's another way here where I've actually taken and put a line through straw, through the nose, and out the bottom. I've actually, in this one, super glued an ear plug in the hole on the top. So I just got a couple of ear plugs, stuffed them in there for some buoyancy, put a straw through the, the ghillie in his nose, and then out the bottom I've got a, a number four treble hook. And uh, the size of the treble hook is such that it doesn't sink the ghillie. So he sits on the surface of the water and I can pull him through and swim him across the surface like an injured bluegill. So I've got this floating swim bait style with a treble hook with the line through the nose using a straw. I think this will be real good in the summertime when it gets hot and the bluegills rise to the surface and it's summertime and those bass will be looking up in deeper water for those suspended gills and they'll whack them off the surface. So I have that floating variety. My flipping variety and then there's a couple other ways uh, you can hook them too. And uh, here's one where I've put in uh, the little twist lock keepers. And I'm showing an image of the little package of twist lock keepers. I can put a link to where I got those. And then the owner number one drop shot hook through the keeper, uh, through the snout of the keeper. That's another good, uh, real good way to hook them. Uh, that way you can fish it drop shot style. You can either throw this out on a line without a weight, just as it is, weightless. And again, this one I've got an earplug glued into the top of it to get a little buoyancy out of it, just to increase the buoyancy, um, and just swim it, you know, a foot under the surface. You can also put a drop shot weight on here and fish this around beds. You can use a longer drop shot to suspend it. You can use a real short drop shot to pull it right down by the bottom and have him uh, actually going down like he's feeding in a bedding situation, probably a deadly bedding situation. So I have that hook set up. And then I think, uh, I think that's it. Those are the three ways anyways that I've rigged it. Uh, that drop shot way you can do it a couple of different ways. But the one main thing I do do and the point of this tip of the video today was to get out the die and don't be afraid to modify that the, the stock ghillie. And again I'm showing you an image here. This is stock. Those three have been dyed using spike it, and you can use garlic, bait fish, whatever kind of colors you want, chartreuse or orange, um, and see if you can't get a more realistic view uh, or a realistic presentation because the details matter sometimes when the fish are finicky or highly pressured. Uh, they're going to want to see something as close to natural as possible. And that ghillie has been a dynamite start on getting a natural representation for a swim bait. Uh, just dial it in that one step further with the die and you might catch more fish. If you found that tip useful or if you catch some fish on it, please like and subscribe. Uh, give me some of your ideas on rigging if you've done it differently and we'll talk to you guys next time on the water.